Do you know people and furniture apply loading on steel buildings? In this lecture, I will talk about Eurocode suite of design codes and how to work out loading on steel buildings as per Eurocode 0. This is part 3 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, have a look at description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. Eurocode Zero is the head board. It provides all the information that you need to work out design loads where we have Eurocode Zero at the top which provides us the information on structural safety, serviceability and durability. It is independent of any design code provision. So it, it gives us the general information. And Eurocode 1 is the one which tells us about actions on the structure, or loads on the structure. We have Eurocode 2, Eurocode 3 and then Eurocode 4, steel concrete composite structures. So mainly this Eurocode 4, it focuses on composite structures, but these composite structures are steel concrete composite structures. Eurocode 5 is related with timber, 6 with masonry, 9 with aluminium, and 7 is geotechnical design and eight is seismic design. Now the structure should be designed in such a way so that it should sustain all the loads that it can be subjected to during its construction and normal use as well. So it should be able to support its own load. And then it should also be designed for accidental loads like explosion, impact, consequences of human error that are not disproportionate to the original cause. Now, how can we avoid or limit potential damage? So reducing the hazards to the structure, selecting structural form that has low sensitivity to hazards. So structural form means you can choose a beam, you can choose a truss, and also the structural form that can, that can survive the accidental removal of a member. This is a strategy for robustness. Using ductile members so that collapse can be avoided and tying the members together. Actually, these are requirements of robustness. So robustness requires us to tie all the members. So in case of any accidental removal of one member, the failure is localized and it is distributed to the connecting members. And the basic requirement is choice of material, design and detailing properly. Detailing is very important as well. And uh, specifying procedures for design. We have ultimate limit state. We have serviceability limit state. What does it mean by ultimate limit state? If I'm designing a beam, what is ultimate limit state? What am I checking? Ultimate limit state is related with the strength or in structural engineering, SDR is the ultimate limit state. If I'm designing a beam, I will work out the moment resistance or capacity. That is my ultimate limit state. For this, I need to factor the loads. For this, I need to work out omega 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK. For this, I'm multiplying this with the factored load. Another thing is serviceability limit state. This is related with the use of the structure. It is related with the perception of people. It is related with how we employ the structure so that we are comfortable as humans. This is related with deflection. This is related with vibration. This is related with the comfort, or comfort of people. An ultimate limit state ensures that it is related with the safety of the structure and safety of people because one single mistake can lead to loss of so many human lives. So it is related with, with the safety of the structure and safety of people. And for that, when we work out loading, we multiply them with the factors. But here, loads are unfactored. So in Eurocode, we just use live loads. So we don't apply these factors. We simply say GK plus QK. Or in most of the cases, we use QK. QK is a live load, GK is dead load. Understand this thing that ultimate limit state means that we will use factored loads and we will work out strength. If it is a beam, we will work out the the moment capacity. If it is a column, we will work out the axial capacity, compressive resistance. If it is a tension member, we will work out its tensile resistance. As I mentioned, ultimate limit state is related to safety of people, safety of structure, collapse or failure of the structure. Serviceability is related with the use of the structure. It is related with the comfort of the people and it is related with the appearance of construction and it is related with the vibrations, deflections. We have different ultimate limit state, EQU, loss of equilibrium, 
str strength now in structural engineering we will be mainly concerned with strength limit state and what does it mean by strength in simple terms in beams it will be moment capacity or moment resistance based on the factor loads and if you wanted to work out the compression capacity of a column then simply base it on the factor loads so most of the time we will be concerned with str and then geo is concerned with the ground and then these are different limits first is equilibrium second is strength loss of strength and third is loss of ground and then we have fat this fat is not like a person is fat or something it's a fatigue <laughs> failure mainly in our case we will be concerned with str these are different persistent transient seismic i don't want to spend too much time on this and then we have permanent action we have variable actions and this is a general formula gamma g plus gk plus gamma q into qk gamma q into c q this is a generalized formula and there are two equations 6.10 and 6.10 b so these are partial safety factors for permanent load 1.35 for variable action it's 1.5 and then again these are combination factors combination means that if there are more than two live loads or variable actions are applied at the same time so up to now we considered that okay imposed load or live load is applied only at one point okay but how about if it can be applied simultaneously now these are two different equations 6.10a and 6.10b for economy we can use this 6 0.10 B, which has got this psi factor at the end. Then I will demonstrate in a minute. This psi factor is 0.925 in the UK. So if you multiply psi 0.925 with 1.35, it turns out to be 1.25. Both equations 6.10 A and B are allowed. And then we have this equivalent horizontal forces. We use these forces to account for frame imperfections. Frames are not perfect. So to account for them, we use equivalent horizontal forces. They used to be known as notional horizontal forces, but now we know them as equivalent horizontal forces, which are equal to one over two hundreds of factored vertical load. In this example, I have a permanent action 3.5. I have variable action 5 kilonewton per meter square. So using 6.10 gamma G GK plus gamma Q QK, I am getting this 12.23. Now these factors are different in different design codes, but in my experience over the years, in past 25 or 30 years, uh, these factors have gone down. The factor for live load used to be 1.7, for dead load it used to be 1.4, but now uh, the factors are getting reduced as we are getting more and more confidence in our materials so this is 6.10 and then using 6.10 a means that we have gamma g plus gamma q into this combination factor c and then qk which is this combination factor is 0.7 for offices and then we get this value 9.98 another equation interesting which is quite often used in the uk is this c factor at the end which is 0.925 we don't have any combination factor in this one all right this is giving us 11.87 now we normally use larger of these two loads 6.10a and 6.10b as 6.10b is larger that's why we are choosing this load but this is still smaller than this one certainly by multiplying 0.925 obviously this reduces to 1.25 this is quite common in the uk because it results in greater economy a lot of the structural engineers they prefer this method 6.10b because it leads leads to economy it leads to lower codes and resultantly a saving in material so the key message i want you to take away from loading is that there are ultimate limit states there are serviceability limit states ultimate limit state is related with the strength the one that we use in structures is related with strength obviously there are others as well but the one that we use here is strength and then we use factored loads in that and serviceability limit state is related with the comfort of people. It is related with the normal use of the building. So we don't have to factor the loads. And then we will work out deflection. Key thing is that the Euro code recommendation is that we only use live load, unfactored live load. But most of the structural engineers around the globe, even in the UK, they use dead plus live load, permanent plus variable actions, but unfactored.